Is 50 always greater than four? We're about to find out. I'm Steph. <laughs> I'm Jay. And this is Modern Motoring. The compact SUV segment remains hot. Mm -hmm. And there are a couple of new additions in the last couple of years. So let's take a look at a couple of those additions in the 2024 Toyota RAV4 Hybrid Woodland Edition versus the 2024 Mazda CX-50. And that is the base model in Canada, the GSL that we're looking at here. So it's a weird comparison off the top because hybrids versus gas is mm. just not always a fair fight but we promise it'll make sense yeah so we're gonna talk about all the great things about the mazda because that's what we're in first we'll flip cars talk about all the great things there put it all together for you and give you the reasoning why it's a closer comparison than you may think so right off the top mm -hmm. mazda is its own little segment leader as far as premium materials go mm -hmm. this thing could be a luxury car if you covered up the little m I would say premium for sure. I think that Mazda has currently placed itself very firmly in the Buick GMC sort of mm. Kia mid-level halfway to luxury. So some standard things that you get here that are fantastic are a big panoramic sunroof, yes. wireless CarPlay, wireless Android Auto, heated seats, heated steering wheel. You get decent sized tires with okay looking rims. I know that's up to each individual person. Mm. You get the big uh, infotainment screen that's pushed back and you have a rotary controller. So little shades of BMW there, which is a good thing to me. You can make it touch enabled if you want for CarPlay and Android Auto. You're right that the amount of standard equipment in mm. the CX-50 is really impressive. The materials are impressive too. Mm. Just to get into more detail about that, you can get leather on the upper trims here in the GSL, the base in Canada. It's leatherette with cloth inserts. The cloth is a really nice, thick, durable feeling cloth. It's heated, that's all I care about. Right. Even though I don't really care for heated seats, it's a nice thing to have. And they're comfortable. We've had the car for a week. I've had no driver fatigue. I don't feel a weird getting in and out. So yeah, leather's nice, but I think this is better. Good amount of space as well. And a nice texturing on this panel on mm. the dashboard. So it's got some visual interest. Under the hood, we have the base engine for the CX-50 lineup, which is a 2.5 liter naturally aspirated four cylinder engine making 187 horsepower, 186 pound feet of torque that hits at 4,000 RPM. And it's pushed through a six speed automatic, which will become important later in this comparison with standard all wheel drive. Which is pretty good. Now, jumping ahead a touch, every 2024 Toyota RAV4 hybrid also gets standard all wheel drive. Mm -hmm. In Canada. In Canada, right. Despite what anyone says, there is more than enough power here. Mm -hmm. Don't get all jittery with the, it's not 200 horsepower, it's not 200 pound-feet of torque. It's a lot, it's plenty. We did a comparison against the turbo engine and we picked this. So we've put this up against Toyota and we know that Toyota has a stellar reputation for safety, makes a lot of equipment standard, but it's important to point out there's a lot of standard safety equipment here too. We have forward collision warning, automatic emergency braking with pedestrian detection, as well as a basic blind spot monitoring system and rear cross traffic alert, lane keep assist, adaptive cruise control, and a traffic jam assistant, which is an unusual thing to see in lower trims. A quick touch on the outside, Mazda has the big plastic cladding above the wheels. It's got a very long shape to it. You can deck it out with roof bars and roof rails, but I have no problems with it. And what's interesting is because the CX-50 is wider and lower than the CX-5 was, the CX-5 would have been a little closer in dimension mm. to the RAV4. This is a little more spacious inside feels a little bit more roomy. So we're gonna just drop some figures here for you to hang on to until we get into the RAV4 so that you can do some comparisons. Here in the CX-50 for the base engine, we're looking at 9.7 liters per 100 kilometers in city driving, 7.9 on the highway and 8.9 combined. And that's with a 60 liter fuel tank. It's not the best figure as far as gasoline engines go in the industry, but it's also not the worst. Mm -hmm. And I'm happy with a six speed automatic transmission and having the trade-off being paying like a few bucks more. And just to drop one more figure on you here before we move on, 41,645 Canadian for this base GSL, and that includes a $2,095 destination charge. And if any of you Americans watching just had your eyes water a little bit, yes, <laughs> we do pay that much in destination fees. It's shocking, <laughs> but anyhow. The price for this as a base model, compared to the value that you get with it, is extremely high on the value side. Mm -hmm. There's not really a lot 
as far as competition goes, that is decked out this much mm -hmm. for a price this low. Over to the RAV4 Hybrid now, and let's take a look at the inside of the Woodland Trail. Oh my goodness, this is almost my perfect car. Really? I'll tell you why. Okay, let's talk about it. Look at the size of those buttons and dials <laughs> on the HVAC system, and you... the heated seats, and the traction control, and I don't care anymore that the heated steering wheel is tucked away out of your line of sight to the left of the steering wheel. I don't care that Toyota doesn't have a standard fully digital instrument cluster on this trim. I don't care that there's a single panel sunroof. This is so function first mm. and it's not a big screen for the infotainment. No, and it's definitely not a big screen at all. In fact, it is quite small, especially compared to the Mazda. It still has a wireless CarPlay and Android Auto though. Yeah, it's got a volume knob and it's just, it's so well laid out. And, and it's grippy and we're going to slip the mm -hmm. gloves on here because all the dials have really nice grippy rubber material on the outside. And it's not just the Woodland trip that has this, all the RAV4s have this, which mm -hmm. makes it even better. Um, it's a bit of a lower resolution graphic on the screen mm. compared to the Mazda CX-50. Yeah, you really think so? I think the I, resolution is high, it's just that the graphics aren't that large. No. I like the Mazda. I think Mazda has a cleaner and classier look. It's got a nice long gear lever and your drive mode's right beside it. And there's a little storage bin up front. No wireless charging. That doesn't really matter to me though. There's not in the base Mazda either. That's okay. I have to say with this woodland trim, I don't know what it is about these floor mats. They give me joy every time I get what? in the car. I, it's a floor I know, mat. it's just a floor mat, but it says Woodland Edition on it. It's, it's got, got little got trees. trees. It makes out me feel outdoorsy, whatever. The, the Wilderness has that too. Yes, but the, but the CX-50 doesn't, and that's what we're comparing this to. That's the only thing design-wise that I really love in this car, though. Um, it's a little dark very black you know how i feel about I dashboard know, shelves i'm not a big fan they're just a dust collectors to me they're functional though yes so you collect dust and i'll collect important things <laughs> that they're going to be right in everybody's vision but anyhow it's okay there is a nice gray stitching line across the dashboard that's at least some visual interest but the rest of it is black and black and black and a little yeah. bit of chrome I don't mind it too, too much. The cloth on the seats is certainly not up to the standard that it is in the Mazda. Correct. And I don't enjoy the seating position quite as much. I like this far more because really? the Mazda, I feel like I'm being dropped in and the belt line mm. is at my shoulder. And here, the belt line is in the middle of my arm where right. I feel it should be. And I find myself with a higher seating position and a clear line of sight going forward. Now, I feel too high in this car versus the CX-50 mm -hmm. where I feel low enough. So that can be a torso length difference. I have mm -hmm. a much taller torso than Jay does. And so if that one or the other speaks to you, that might, might be something you want to consider. On the power side, all RAV4 hybrids, Woodland trim included because it's a package, run up a 2.5 liter four cylinder engine and 219 horsepower. Mm -hmm. It's pretty good. Toyota doesn't give us torque figures. That's okay. It's an ECVT. Right. Not geared as opposed to the CX-50 with their six-speed. Some people are into having a geared transmission because they care about drive feel. Not for everybody. The small drawback to an ECVT or a CVT for that matter is you get that really loud whiny sound uh, when you throw your foot down if you're getting on a highway. You still have ample power. Uh, just the audio cues are a little intrusive. I'm not a fan of the CVT here in the RAV4 mm. necessarily. I still, I don't love a six speed automatic necessarily either, but I like it better than this. I find it a little pulley. Like you said, it's a bit noisy, kind of droney. Mm. Not my preference, but I get why Toyota uses it because it certainly does help with fuel economy and that's the entire point of driving a hybrid. All wheel drive is standard here as well and that's because there's a motor, an electric motor on the rear axle. So it's mm. not mechanical driven from the engine. It's electronically driven from the back. I don't think most people are ever gonna notice a difference between the two. No, they think people only care about having the all-wheel drive. Right. Power-wise, I find there is a slight difference in the hybrid in terms of feeling a little more power, especially at lower speeds, but mm. I'm not sure it's enough that the average driver is going to be really swayed by it. With the Woodland trim, you do get 18-inch bronze wheels, a little 
Nah, not my thing. They're sort of ruggedish looking. I guess. A new paint color for 2024, which is what you're looking at with the green. Uh, you get the black door handles, you get your exhaust tips in black, and if you notice the big black crossbars and roof bars, that's also part of the woodland trim. I think it looks kind of cool. Mm -hmm. Give it uh, that nice outdoors and ruggedy look, and you can put a roof box on there, or a kayak, or a canoe, or all sorts of things. Off the top of my head, this generation of RAV4 has been in place since 2018. They're due for a full uh, they redesign. Are, but it's aging extremely well oh, on the exterior. Oh, it still looks just as good as it did six years ago as it does today. Fully agree. Standard LEDs, nice thin uh, horizontally opposed headlights and your taillights. And it's not as bland as it used to be. For fuel, every RAV4 hybrid uses a 55 liter fuel tank. Non-woodland trims get six liters per hundred kilometers as a combined rate. Pretty good, actually pretty great. Mm. Because the Woodland has the TRD off-road tune suspension, it's got the skid plates on it, and there's a little more weight to it, that number goes up to 6.4 liters per hundred kilometers. I still think that's a great trade-off. Mm -hmm. That would not deter me at all. Our as-tested price for the RAV4 with everything in except taxes, $44,538.58. Compare that to the CX-50s all-in pricing except for the taxes at $41,645. That's a difference of $2,893.58. Right, and that is important because... The fuel consumption on both of these are very, very different. As we said, three liters per kilometer is a difference. Natural Resources Canada puts the RAV4 at $1,856 as far as what you would pay on average for fuel. Now, we get people arguing about this all the time. Natural Resources Canada uses a standardized system for estimating a fuel cost over a year. They base it on an average fuel price across the country. They base it on 20,000 kilometers driven in a year, and they base it on the combined fuel figure. So it's standardized for every vehicle they test. Natural Resources Canada puts the RAV4 at $1,856 per year for fuel. It puts the CX-50 at $2,581, a difference of $725. Mm -hmm. In the beginning, I said it's not really a fair comparison, but it is, so here's where it is. When you look at owning each of these cars over a four-year period, the RAV4 makes up the difference in its upfront price versus the CX-50 within those four years. And a quick way as to how we got to the four years, the price difference is about $3,000 and the fuel difference is $725. So 725 times four is just under $3,000. Right. So that's why we're saying it's gonna take four years to recoup the upfront cost of the RAV4 versus the CX-50, but it's not always about dollars and cents. It isn't, but it, if you're gonna make it about dollars and cents, the short answer is, that you're going to make up the difference if you choose the RAV4. So if you're gonna own either of these for more than four years and that's the deciding factor for you, then the RAV4 is the obvious choice. But if you want something on a short-term lease, maybe two, three, four years, ideally three, four, and you like a six-speed automatic transmission, you like Mazda's premium materials, you like the look of the CX-50 more, you don't mind losing a little bit in the horsepower race, 187 versus 219, then look at the CX-50 in the RAV4 for 2024. Gets Toyota Safety Sense 2.5. Highlights include the lane trace assist, the lane departure alert, automatic high beams, uh, pedestrian braking, not part of Safety Sense, but also included the standard safety, blind spot monitoring, and rear cross traffic alert. So basically equivalent to the CX-50. Yeah. So we've outlined the practical reasons why you might choose one over the other. Let's go with the heart. Which one are you picking? Uh, it's a 51% for Mazda. Okay. I like the gear transmission. I like the premium materials. I like the way it drives and it feels. And my only real drawback is how low my body is made hmm. for it. But I can just get a phone book. <laughs> or like something to boost me up or whatever. But okay, maybe I won't. But Can I you just... imagine him driving down the road with a phone book under his... <laughs> I don't think half our audience knows what a phone book is. It's true. Know? But I like the feel of the Mazda. And for non-luxury brands, to me, nobody beats Mazda for drive feel. So interesting that that's your result, because here's mine. 
51% for this RAV4. And you I hate said this, the shelf. You I hate know, the CVT. I know. And I said the same thing when I picked the Grand Highlander over the Atlas, the Atlas, which, I, which is that I'm disappointed in myself for saying this. And I, that's not meant to be a knock against Toyota. It's actually a compliment for Toyota, because as much as I don't appreciate their current design sense on the interiors, at least, and I don't love the CVT. It's just so hard to turn down that long-term recovery that you get in the fuel savings and the power is really good and you're gonna just retain value like crazy and the reliability is excellent. And that's not to say that Mazda's reliability is one it's way or the other. All. But there's just so much baseline value in every single Toyota. And I do like the CX-50 a lot, especially the base trim. I was shocked how much I like the base trim. Mm. So I wouldn't begrudge anyone or judge anyone for picking it. It's just that the case for the RAV4 is just that slightly bit better. Thanks so much for watching. If you haven't already, please hit that little button down below that lets you subscribe so you don't miss any more of our videos. Maybe tick the bell too to make sure you're kept in the loop and let us know what you think. Which one of these would you pick? You can let us know on social media as well. We're on all the major platforms, so please reach out and thanks for watching.